Hi, I'm Kirby with Augustine E-Bikes. And for the last several months, I've been traveling around the country visiting family and friends. So I haven't published any new videos on our channel in several months. I'm now back and excited to share a whole new series of videos with our YouTube audience. Today we're going to look inside your controller. Think of your controller as an onboard computer that controls all aspects of your e-bike. Inside the controller is a circuit board that through sensors and firmware manages voltage and ampage input and output and controls all of the critical functions of your e-bike. The first thing your controller looks for is its power source. That comes from your battery. It calculates your battery's voltage and amps and if compatible distributes that power to the controller's various functions, such as the motor. It determines what are the power requirements for the motor and determines at what intervals to distribute that power. It takes input from the throttle to determine how much power output needs to be generated. Twisting the throttle varies the strength and polarity of the magnetic field adjacent to the sensor, which sends a corresponding voltage of between 0.8 volts and 4.5 volts to be sent to the controller. It also reads information from the brakes. When the brakes are applied, a sensor cuts the motor, reducing your forward momentum for a smoother stop. The controller also controls additional functions such as pedal assist, cruise control, lights, the onboard LCD, maximum speed, wheel size, minimum and maximum ampage, voltage cutoff, and much, much more. Some controllers are built into the frame of the bike, some controllers are controlled by iPhones, and some controllers are external and controlled by wired LCD inputs. Whatever kind of controller you have, the functions give or take a few bells and whistles control the most important functions of your e-bike. If you're just getting into converting your bike into an e-bike, it can be challenging to navigate the installation. They often don't come with instructions, or if they do, they're often hard to understand. The good news is that there's tons of good information available on the web. Controllers come in a multitude of sizes, powers, and number of functions that they control. For this video, I'm using two controllers that I've used for my 1200 watt kits. One is a 30 amp controller and the other is a 35 amp controller. It's very important when buying a kit to make sure that you match the ampage with your motor's power and your battery's BMS system. Some kits don't provide a powerful enough controller to get the most out of your motor. Many controllers come with more connections than you will use on your e-bike, such as extras like lights, cruise control, etc. We often get asked if I don't connect functions such as brakes or pedal assist, will my controller still work? And the answer is yes. Each controller can handle many functions on your e-bike, but the main functions are the connection to the battery, the motor, the throttle, and your LED or LCD display. Controllers offer a variety of types of connections, from quick connect to direct wiring and everything in between. Personally, when available, I prefer the quick connections. They're easy to install and are waterproof. However, sometimes the quick connects can be a little finicky, so what you want to do is make sure that you really make as tight a connection as possible. There are many types of battery connectors to choose from. You can hand wire the connections together or pick a favorite quick connect. I personally prefer the power plug connection. It's easy to use and creates a really solid connection every time. Every conversion kit comes with a set of brakes. I typically don't use them because I really prefer my own disc brakes. However, one nice feature of these brakes, particularly when you're new to e-bikes, is that when you pull the brake lever, it not only activates the brake, but cuts the motor. I happen to have one e-bike where I still use these. Here are the controller's connections for the brakes. Most controllers have a pedal assist function. I happen to be a big fan of pedal assist, but many newer bikes don't have enough space on the crank arm to attach the sensor and the magnet. But you can get the same effect of pedal assist by the combination of applying the throttle while pedaling. Here are some of the controller connections for pedal assist. I hope you find this video helpful. You can visit us at AugustineEbikes.com.